Let's put my glasses on, huh? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Let's, uh, we have a Boy Scout from Troop 872. Why don't you come on up and you can lead us in, in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dad, you want to give them my, your, Alderman Van Akron, you want to give them your Put your hand over your heart, um, and I'll lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Me too, so that everybody... Um, Curtis Jackson III. Curtis Jackson III. Well, welcome. And thank you for jo joining us tonight. Okay, we also have tonight, I believe it's a joint meeting again, Mike. Mike Lightpam, if you could call the. I'd like to uh, make a motion to open our redevelopment and we need a roll for the council. Bowman. Excuse me. Deberg. Here. Eberg. Here. Doyle. Here. Manny. Here. Moody. Here. Perez. Here. Ports. Here. Schultz. Here. Stephan. Excuse me. D. Van Akron. Here. T. Van Akron. Here. Vanderwilly. Here. Wangeman. Here. Warner. Here. And Warninger. 14 present. A quorum is present. Um, we'll start out tonight. We're back here again this evening to talk about the Great Lakes project and the city's joint project with Great Lakes. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss the financial end of it. So I'll turn it over to our finance director, Rich Gebhardt. We'll go through um, some things that he has for you. We'll hold all questions. First of all, we'll until he's completed, and so that way he may answer most of your questions, I hope. Then we'll open the, to the floor of the alderman, then I will open it to the floor of anybody out in the audience. Rich? Okay, is it on now? Okay, good evening. Uh, what I'd like to do is go through some uh, the overheads that relate to the packets that you received this evening. It'll be probably about eight of the sheets. Um, what I'd like to do is to try to get uh, more focused on some of the processes and some of the concepts that are within this agreement. And the uh, first one here that we're looking at is um, the right, uh, the column here, this left-hand column, was the right-hand column that uh, Great Lakes presented last week on their chart of the total guaranteed payments. And on here, what I've done is, is I broke it out into the room tax column and into the property tax column of the guarantees. And uh, these should be viewed as the revenue streams that would be making the payments for the projects that are underneath here. In this case, it would be the conference center uh, and the promenade that would be under the room tax column. And then under the uh, guaranteed property tax, we would have the tax incremental financing district projects of the um, what would be for the resort and the um, redevelopment authority loan to to the uh, for the resort um, see here that right now that we're looking at about 25 million dollars of guarantees on the room tax the conference center and parking lot we're looking at debt issuance of about 7.7 .7 million for the promenade about 2.4 million We'd have uh, capitalized interest to include in the issue. So we'd be looking at uh, total debt issuance of about $11 million over 25 years. The principal and interest on that right now is projected about $21.5 million. And then compared to the uh, room tax guarantee, 
the Great Lakes is about $25 million. So there is a margin in there. Uh, the city is also taking on uh, the interest risk from when we will first fi finance the debt on short-term notes and then in three to five years put it out in long-term. So there is some interest risk, but there is some margin to be able to cover that. On the uh, property tax side, then, we're looking at a guarantee of 16.4 million. And including that would be the resort side that would uh, total debt issuance of about 4.8 million over 15 years. And the principal and interest on that would be about 7.3 million. And com then compared to the 16.4 million, it would allow the city um, a balance for the public improvements debt service of about $9 million. So it would pay for a uh, major portion of the public improvements on the peninsula. Okay. On this one, we're right now trying to compare the reserves and deposits to the guaranteed payments, so you can kind of get a concept of what we're talking about here in the agreement. Uh, there's the cash guarantee that uh, that Great Lakes will put a million dollars at closing in, into a uh, escrow deposit, and then there's the half million dollar reserve that in 2005 is a combination of the city's tax collections from the Great Lakes project uh, for um, for 2000, 2004 and then also whatever the balance would be made up by the Friends and uh, Great Lakes to get to, to the half million dollars. The uh, That half million dollars would be in place in 05 and it would be uh, distributed back to the sources by 2010. The other deposit of the million dollars would stay in place uh, as a minimum to 2013. The Great Lakes uh, would have a right if they achieve taxes of 110% of these payments, uh, then this reserve would be returned to them by 2013. Um, if they meet, did not meet the 110% in any given year, then it would be extended one year for each time, each year they, they miss that goal. Uh, so it could be in place longer, um, but right now this would be the schedule if they uh, do as an anticipated. On this column, I'm basically indicating uh, what percentage of uh, that guarantee payment that this reserve would be uh, starting uh, in the early years, well, in the 2005 would ex exceed the initial payment but then it would be in the 70 some percents uh, to 2010, then half a million dollars is uh, returned. It would be just under 50% for about three years, and then we would not have a cash reserve after that. Um, so I just felt that, you know, if you got a focus on here, you can see in these early years, this city does have this, this cash deposit to turn to. Uh, later in these later years, uh, especially here after the uh, TIF district is dissolved about 2018. This is all room tax dollars and from one source and you do not have any, any cash reserve at that point. But This is the uh, debt issuance for the project for um, this year coming up. Uh, this is the, for the public improvements. So we're looking at the, um, the sewers, the streets, and uh, the utilities, all, all those public improvements. And we're looking at, at a total uh, debt issuance of about $2.9 million for 2003. The other uh, part of tax incremental district six debt issuance would be for the redevelopment authority loan and those related expenses. We are looking at uh, using uh, $2 million of funds on hand as advances from other funds here initially uh, for this to cut down the initial debt issuance and the interest expense. 
and we'd be uh, looking at issuing about $3.2 million for, the, for that portion. For the uh, general obligation that would be related to the room tax, we'd be looking at the redevelopment authority loan that's related to the conference center and the parking lot of um, well, about $7 million for the conference center, $855,000 for the parking lot. Then the promenade would also be coming under the room tax, about $2.4 million. Uh, all total, we'd be looking at that issuance of $11 million. That would be away from District 6. In total, we'd be looking at uh, over $17 million for the project in 2003. Then in 2004, we, that issuance would include the repayment of the advances. The pedestrian bridge right now is in the capital improvements program. Uh, there would be refinancing of the remaining mortgage. Be looking at $3.9 million of debt issuance, a uh, total of $21 million for the project. If anyone from the council has any questions on any of these pages before he turns them, just let us know. numbers he just went over do match the numbers on the okay. Don't mean to put those back on. Well, back on this version. Yes. Correct. I I can put put that first page back on. The uh, that the mayor is referring to, as we were saying, I just, uh, in that last page you just look at, I, I just put this in more detail in, in some of this and, and combine it in, in the one year's column, but this would be the $11 million uh, f that's related to the room tax, and the this would be the uh, uh, $4.8 million for the... Um, District 6 borrowings. But there, there would, I guess, just trying to relate to that. Um, in addition to that, there is the borrowings for the public improvements. So go back to the, that last page again. Um, that we are including these public improvements as an addition to that. Rich, on the, on the public improvements, this is the public improvements not just for the part of the site of where Great Lakes is going to put their um, resort, but this would be the public improvements for the entire peninsula? That's correct. It would be all the streets, the promenade ex extend along all the river, uh, be all the utilities. So, okay, this is um, our, our debt limit projection. Uh, we have been at 2.3% at the end of 2000, 2001, at the end of 2002, and th this percentage is the am amount of debt that we have, such as end of 2003 was $53 million general obligation debt. Uh, compared to our equalized value of $2.1 uh, billion. So the uh, ratio was 2.5%. Uh, the council has set a uh, policy to maintain um, debt issuance within 3% of the equalized values. Uh, so we're looking here for 2003, we will have maturities of about $6 million. And then these are the issues that we just looked at uh, for the 2.9 million, 3.2, and 11 million. And then we'd also have our regular program debt issuance of, of 3 million. Um, with that, uh, again, we'd be issuing 17 million for the South Pier project. Our total debt issuance would be about 67 million. And uh, based on, we're doing an average estimated increase in the values of about 5.6 per year. 
over the next three years. And on that basis, uh, we would still be within uh, the 3% each year. Now, we mentioned about using the, the cash on hand and then refinancing that uh, in the next uh, debt issuance in 2004 for TIF 6, and that's where this would be included in here uh, within the 3 million nine for 2004. We also should note that in this projection, we do have uh, in there uh, 6,700,000 for the police facility in 2005. And we are still within the two, with the, under the 3% uh, limit. Any questions on that page? Rich, I think that was a question that Alderman Manning had earlier was that, that were we still to be able to do other projects that we had on the, on the plans and, and that's what you showed there in the following years. Also, can you explain just a little bit why it's important that we stay under that 3%? Uh, yes, the council adopted that policy several years ago, and that was to be able to ensure that the city would be able to maintain its AA credit rating with Moody's and Standard & Poor's. And of course, that uh, is a rating that provides the city with lower interest rates when we do issue debt, and uh, therefore um, saves the money for the city compared to, to a lower rating. And uh, so generally, if you see, um, Cities of that caliber, AA, generally they, they do have a um, reasonable level of, of debt. They're not up to four, four and a half percent of their equalized values. Anything else? Alderman Wong, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, Rich, I just had a call this afternoon from a lady who was very concerned, lives up on the north side, I mean the south side, referenced the stormwater problem. Maybe Mr. Holton could answer that. I don't know one of you. Uh, where does that stand with relation to all this? And I'm sure you're familiar with up on South 17th and Ashland Avenue. And the people up there are worried that they're going get, to get left back in the weeds on this one and uh, get forgotten. Rich is still showing in 04 and 05 $3 million in the capital improvements program. So those projects would have to compete with other projects, uh, non-TIF projects in the capital improvements program, and we will be putting that project in this for uh, funding for next year. We will do that. That's a matter of the Capital Improvements Commission approving that. That's scheduled for next it, year then? Right now it's scheduled for next year, but uh -huh. it has to go through capital improvements and council approval. Is that so, the uh, 17th and Ashland area? Yes, or? We're, we're, we're doing the design right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that answers my question. Okay, Alderman Eberg. Uh, presumably this makes our cash position much less robust when you transfer the, the money back and forth. I think if we take just the stormwater question, we're bonding at $3 million a year over the next three years. If we just follow the uh, logical uh, progression of how we would uh, fund stormwater, we're talking about $2 million for South 12th Street. We're talking about two bites of the apple of $2.5 million uh, for 17th and Ashland. So that leaves in three years $2 million for everything else. Is that correct? Again, I, I guess like to, the priorities within the Capital Improvements Commission. And that's true with or without this project, because yes. that $3 million cap for capital improvements is with or without this project at all. The question is, though, we have at that 2.9% very little headroom for additional debt without bumping up against our uh, uh, self-imposed limit and, and affecting our bonding rating. So that would be the uh, one-tenth of a percent would be what, $150,000, $200,000? Yes, this is uh, fairly close. Uh, you, you know, you don't have room for another major project to come into this. One more question then. How, when do we start to clear? When does it start to clear out uh, uh, where we start to improve our, uh, our, our, or reduce our debt load? Well, when you consider, as I mentioned, you know, this is going to be issued as five-year bond anticipation notes. 
because we have to wait for the revenue stream to come online, we'll not be paying any principal payments during those five years. So we, you know, we, we, are, we do have principal payments in here around $6 million, and some of that may increase from some of the debt issuance, like the $3 million a year. But from uh, these borrowings that we're talking about here for this project, there will be no principal paid for the first five years, so you're talking about some time after that. Alderman Perez. Pass. Okay. Alderman Wangaman, you were from last time. Alderman Doyle. Uh, it's just a comment. Uh, point one percent is two point five million dollars. Get out the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> This is a comparison on the uh, estimated debt service for the conference center and the promenade projects funded by the room tax from Great Lakes. And this is the column that uh, broke out earlier, that was the room tax. Uh, this is the projected debt service for the conference center and the parking lot that relate to that. And this column would be for uh, debt service for the promenade. Um, you can see here that the guarantee through 2028 for the room tax is about 25 million. The conference center debt service is projected at about 16 million. And um, the uh, debt service for the promenade about 4.6. So there is a margin in here. These early years, again, because we're not paying any principal. And then when we do pay principal, it's, it's, it's tighter. Um, but as we said too uh, before, that we do have an interest rate risk that the city is taking on uh, on these projects. Any questions on that? For me? Okay. Uh, your next page I don't have as an overhead, but it does show the boundaries of tax and criminal district uh, number six, which basically relates from it starts really from out our window here with some of the housing projects that the city did uh, across from City Hall. Goes down around Commerce where we did the um, highway building, rock line expansions, and then goes down to Indiana, which uh, some of the areas there, which is now Pent Air. And then the peninsula that we're speaking of tonight for the South Pier project, and then north uh, to the marina. And that's the basically the projects within the district. Um, Rich, Rich, can you comment a little bit? When was this um, this TIF organized or, or start? Next, next page. Oh, I'll, let's go to the next page then. <laughs> next page. Uh, I do have some of the basic history on, on that that I just go over briefly here. Uh, this is for tax incremental district number six. It was formed in 92. Uh, the last project expenses right now is 2004. We did receive an ex extension from the state that put out to 2004 for the expenses, but we did not receive an extension for the district. The district is still going to expire in 2018. So we have a, a shorter term for um, structuring this debt. Um, we did issue about $12 million of debt uh, for the district. There's about $10 million outstanding. Uh, for the issues we just spoke about between 2003 and 2004, we'll be issuing about $10 million of additional debt for this district. Uh, we have advances from other funds um, that uh, from funds on hand, about $1.4 million. Four. And now, as we spoke tonight, we're looking at, at another $2 million for, for at least a one-year period. The uh, value uh, for District uh, 6 is at $15.2 million, it went down about 400000 and that basically is related to our city purchasing the uh, South Pier property from uh, Coke, and then it went tax exempt as the city purchased it. Um, it uh, then our tax increments that we are receiving from that is about 440000 and it was decreased about 19000 and again for the same reason. 
Uh, the tax increments then, as I said, is 440,000. The debt service about a million one. So it's about uh, $600,000 that we have debt above increments. That has been covered by what the state has allowed um, for similar districts to share increment. And District 1, the downtown district, which is by uh, Yonkers in that area, um, has had uh, surplus increments that has been able to share with District 6. And therefore, uh, as we have not had to put this on the tax levy as an additional burden, it has been covered by uh, Districts 1 transfers. But the, the situation there is that District 1 will be dissolved in 2005, and so uh, we'll see the impact in 2006. So we'll be looking at that shortly here. Any questions on that page? Okay. Now, this is just on District 6 right now, just looking at and our financial situation there. Um, what I try to do here is to set up time benchmarks of how things proceeded over the district. And uh, this first benchmark includes the uh, debt for the marina, the R-Way housing projects. And so uh, right now we have our current debt for the district from 2003 to 2018 is $8.3 million as principal and interest. Uh, we have the advances, as we noted, uh, for the other funds of about one and a half million. I mentioned uh, we have the District 1 is transferring to District 6. Between now and 2005, we're, we anticipate about $2.2 .2 million of transfers. The uh, tax revenues, as we noted, was about 440000 a year. If that stayed at that level through 2018 and did not increase, it would generate uh, $7 million. The difference between the debt service and the revenues is about half a million dollars out to 2018. You set up a column here of looking at what the estimated average per year uh, impact would be on a $100,000 parcel on the taxes over the 14 years. In, the, in this case, be about $1.85. Benchmark two includes the South Pier project, and this is really where we're at at this point in time. We've acquired the property. We've issued debt for the seawall, uh, for the park. Uh, we have not put in the streets or any of the other improvements. And the total uh, current debt f for these projects, uh, principal and interest, is just over $5 million. Adding the two of these together, uh, $5.6 million, We'd be looking at an imp average impact about twenty dollars on the hundred thousand dollar parcel. Uh, what we're talking about here tonight then is is from here down uh, with benchmark three. We're looking at these uh, South Pier projects of um, with uh, with putting in the streets, the streets, sewers, utilities, and I'm adding the promenade on here because in, in this scenario. I'm saying if we went ahead with this without an agreement in place and we did not have any development, what would be the impact? Uh, the principal and interest on all those improvements on $5.4 million of debt would be about $8.8 .8 million. Adding those to together, we'd be looking at about $14.5 million of debt that would have to go on the taxes or about $52 per year on the 100000 parcel. On benchmark four, we're looking at then entering into agreement with uh, Great Lakes, uh, issuing under the District 6, uh, we issued $7.1 million in 2003, 2004. 4.4 of that would be for Great Lakes. This is separate from the conference center. Uh, looking at principal and interest of 6.7 million. And then we would have 1.3 million for uh, refinancing the land acquisition, the remediation, and currently the $1 million that's uh, in the program for the pedestrian bridge. That would be an additional 4.2 million principal and interest. Uh, the property taxes, revenue from Great Lakes, remember going way back to page one that we had in there, 16.4 million from the property tax. That's where it comes in here now. 
Um, and then if we have the agreement with the Great Lakes, we would be able to have the room tax for the promenade that I had up in here. So I'm putting a credit in here for, for that portion that's, that's in this number up here. Uh, the net impact on that then is about 4.6 million, uh, or about $16 per thousand, or $16 per $100,000 parcel per year. Um, to get to a break-even point, we have the other half of the peninsula to develop. So in the future years, if we had development at the rate of 1.7 million per year, about $22 million of development between now and 2016, uh, it would generate $4.6 million of revenue and be pretty much at a break-even point. So there's a lot there, but I was trying to go through the timelines and the concepts that uh, we've been looking at with District 6. Obviously, it has been a concern, uh, but, you know, with what's important, I guess my main point here is if you're going to proceed with developing the rest of the improvements on the district, of the streets, sewers, utilities, and promenade, you definitely need an agreement with someone. You need a development agreement to support that debt. You need that revenue stream that we looked at on the first page to be able to support that debt. Hold on. Hold on, Rich. We got a question from Alderman Ports. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Mr. Uh, just to make sure I'm understanding your schedule here, uh, basically what you're telling me that if we don't get the additional development after building this project, it's going to cost the average homeowner $88 a year. How much did you say? 88 give or take a few dollars. But. I, th I said if we did the improvements here without development, it would be $52. But those numbers are including doing the hotel, right? Or am I misunderstanding? Well, I'm, I'm saying, it, well, maybe I have to clarify your question, but it in that essence, I thought there was a snapshot of where we would be if we just did the hotel and then didn't have the additional development that came out okay. after that. Okay, if we if we did the Great Lakes Resort, they built the condominiums. Uh, we would be down at this level of sixteen dollars. Per thousand. Okay, so I shouldn't be adding those Compared together. To, this is where we're at right now is twenty dollars per thousand. Okay. So we're better than our current position, but we still have some ways to go here, and that would require the development of the remainder of the peninsula to cover that, okay. which is what we anticipated. So without the other development, then it's going to cost the homeowners seventeen dollars a year. Roughly. If there was zero development on the rest of the peninsula or within the, the district. Okay. Thank you. This is somewhat saying the same thing in a different manner. Um, this is looking at the comparison of the estimated tax levy increases from District 6 at various increases in values. And each one of these has a very long spreadsheet on it with all the expenses and revenues for District 6 under different scenarios. And this is, if you can picture the far right-hand column of, of three spreadsheets basically summarized. And so this is the net amount. This first one would be the estimated uh, tax levy increase based on, now this is if we do all the improvements on, on the pier, on the peninsula, and we have uh, additional value of $2 million per year constructed without Great Lakes. So you say no to the agreement, we do, we construct everything on the peninsula for public improvements, and we get $2 million per year developed. Uh, as you see initially here, this goes back to District 1 supporting uh, District 6 and ending in 2005. This is the impact in 2006, a million two that, that hits right away. That can be uh, somewhat addressed in some financing restructuring. It could probably come down to about 750000 but it would increase some of the other years later on. Uh, the concern uh, basically, you know, is that you'd have 
six million dollars of impact still in in that with within these years from 2006 to 2013 it would mean that you know a two years from now that in addition to being concerned about all our other budget problems the impact from the state's budget the impact from health insurance we would also have this concern of this large increase in the tax levy for debt service uh, for district six and that's why basically I'm saying if you don't have an agreement, don't build out the rest of the peninsula for public improvements because you need the revenue stream to support it. And that's indicated here with uh, this center column when you have uh, just, as, just Great Lakes by itself, no additional development. Oh, they're 41 million with the resort and all the condos. They would have some taxes coming in in 2005 from what they construct in 2003. Uh, Basically, it would be uh, some surpluses, some, some shortfalls through the years. Uh, and this, uh, this debt service does not have the advances that we have in there that would have to be accounted for. Um, and here in this third column would be the 41 million from Great Lakes and then also $2 million per year uh, constructed on the remainder of the peninsula combined. And as you can see, then we end up looking at a surplus position at after 10 years and after 15 years about 2.2 but again uh, you know as of right now we have one and a half million dollars of the advances that as I said wasn't not in here so that's what it would go towards so that, that's our break-even type of position kind of set in two ways uh, just that this is kind of gives you a timeline here of the concern of doing all the improvements and not being sure of what kind of development we're going to have. I think that concludes the overhead. Does anyone have any questions on that last one or any of the other ones you want me to go back to? <laughs> oh. It didn't go on right away. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess, Rich, at this point, uh, I know it was said that that was per thousand, but that was per hundred thousand of valuation, the number you gave out, just to clarify that for the public if they caught, caught the wrong term there. I guess, Rich, you're feeling yourself as the Director of Finance, are you comfortable thus far with the numbers? I guess I admit as a Conservative Finance Director, I guess I get a little bit of fear of heights of the tall numbers that we're dealing with here. Uh, we're dealing with them for, for many months and you know they're uh, obviously very large from both sides. Uh, we're talking about issuing $20 million of debt uh, for one project, which is of course very major compared to what the city has ever done before. Uh, you know, there's you know a lot of factors involved in here. Um, I guess, it, if you sort of remember uh, like the, the one that I showed here on, on the reserves, I think we're pretty well protected in the early years. It's the later years. Um, it's a long-term risk, I guess, that, that I'm, I'm a little more concerned about uh, for the city. But it, it definitely is an, a, an assistance like we just looked at for District 6. It will help improve the picture a couple of years from now. Uh, I guess I'm just uh, looking at 10 years further out where there's no cash reserves. If you're looking at the de being dependent on the 8% room tax from, uh, you know, just the resort by itself, uh, those are the areas I see as being a little more vulnerable. So I guess I, that's my perspective on it anyway. Rich, when you say there, there may not be cash reserves 10 years out, that's because the project and they paid 110% of the projected money? Yes, if that's one formula that's in the agreement that if they do uh, meet that, that that would be the basis on which they would be able to withdraw the reserve. Um, I got to also paint the gloom and <coughs> side that is a possibility if they don't do well, the reserves could be tapped and they could be gone because of, of that reason. But uh, if there's long-term economic difficulty of, of, of some sort, they're, obviously they're if the, the taxes aren't there, uh, they're backing it with their net cash flow, they're backing it with their personal and corporate guarantees, and after that, you know, we the, they have the cash reserves there. But, uh, but when that goes away, that means they had 10 years of 110% projected 
right. ten percent higher than what they projected. Basis. I would hope we get ten years of ten percent higher than what we've projected, because then all your numbers go up ten percent too. That's correct. So. Anything else, Alderman Warner? Uh, one more thing, Rich. Uh, as far as TIF six goes, any development on the other side of the river, let's say the green warehouse or someday the armory is removed and, and more development put in there sometime in the future that that affects the balance for, for yes the, that's the correct also now any development within the district will assist the district i guess so that that would be a benefit is what i'm saying thank you alderman warner alderman wangaman at the risk of sounding dumb which i do often is it an oversimplification to say that the project would cost the taxpayer more money if we do nothing down there than if we build it? No, I guess it kind of goes back to this benchmark one here of this is where we're at now. Um, we're looking at, as it's said at this point, about impact on the $100,000 parcel of about an average about $20 per year if <coughs> nothing is built. Um, and we're projecting right now about 16 17 dollars per parcel with just Great Lakes. So uh, obviously it's an improvement from where, where we're at now. But if nothing was built, it would cost a little more to the average yes, taxpayer? Yes, it would cost the, yes, I'm saying the, the $20 per 100,000 parcel. At, at some point when we get this all ferreted out, will we be able to tell our constituents, John Q. Lunchbox out there, whether how much this is going to cost him a thousand? I this think, is what people want to know. Yeah, I think the focus, will, it'll, it'll be zero through 2005. I think we're pretty well got the structured and protected as we showed before between with the assistance of District 1. Uh, and we have never uh, put any of the TIF debt service as additional tax taxes on the tax levies. We've made advances from other funds to cover it in hopes for returns in the future. but. Uh, 2006 is, is probably the crucial point where there could be an impact right now. And that's why we're saying it's, it's not only having a development agreement, it's also the timing of that compared to the improvements. Obviously, the earlier you start, the earlier, earlier you get the increment. So if you, don't, you, know, if you pass on Great Lakes, we definitely need an agreement early next year with somebody else that's major uh, to, before we do the improvements uh, for the rest of the peninsula. Thank you. Alderman Ports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just two comments. Uh, one about the green warehouse. The green warehouse has a certain tax value. I don't know if it's 400000 that is assessed that. But if the city buys that, that comes out of the equation. And now we, we're creating a hole until that's replaced with something. Uh, so even short term, it have a negative impact on this. Uh, second law about the uh, advances from TID 1 and so on, why true that isn't being added, added to the tax levy, that TID mon 1 money could have been used for something else that maybe now is covered by tax levy or mm, I don't know if we could have used it for flood prevention or not, but there, there, just to say it's not added to the tax levy, there is a cost to the fact that that TID 1 money has to be used for TID 6. And, in why directly it's not on the tax levy, indirectly it is. And that's true with or without this project? Yes. Because TID 6 is behind before we even started this project. Yes. Yes, the, the District 1 money would have restrictions on it because of the state regulations on TIF and how it could be used. It would have to either stay within District 1 or be applied to another district like 6. Or the district be dissolved and then it goes on the general tax levy. Yeah, a bigger base then for. That's a possibility if yeah. you had enough dollars escrowed to pay off the remaining debt. It's a possibility. Anything else, all in reports? No. Any other questions for Rich? Mayor Schramm. Thank you, Alderman Van Ackeren. Just a quick one. Uh, Alderman Ports brings up if the city. Use your mic so. If the city would buy the green warehouse or, you know, that, that it would create a hole. You're right, but we're not saying the city's going to buy that green warehouse. We may have a private developer buying it, then it stays on a tax roll, and any, any new tax coming on would only help this project along. So, uh, well, so well, help, exactly, but you're, if you assume, yeah, the city's going to take it off tax roll, you're going to create a, another hole there. But not saying we're going to, we're looking at some private developer buying that and moving, well, they working. 
Right, but then you're going to have more tax increments on there. Any other questions from the Alderman? Alderman Berg. Um, just one, I think we've talked about the possibility of extending the life of the TIF, and I think it's been extended once. I guess your considered opinion if that still is a possibility and something that we should pursue, and what that would do to, if you would, uh, uh, smooth out our debt. Yes, the uh, mayor has been talking to our state representatives um, here during this past week uh, about that potential. Uh, they have um, developed some through the Legislative Fiscal Bureau, I believe it is. Yeah, and, and the, the, there's a draft currently that's being drafted right now, and we talked to Senator Leipam Friday, and Senator Panzer were here Friday, and they are there is something being introduced that will ask for the extension of that TIF. Um, I don't remember how many years it was, but a few more years out on the life of the of the TIF, and there is some um, some projections from I think it was the Fiscal Bureau on on how that would affect or if we even had to do that based on but we are working on that to make a long story short and um, it's there's uh, you never know with the state but there's a very good chance that that will happen if you could just address what would the impact of that be uh, in, in very general terms I, I think we were looking at a four-year extension was, was that um, you know I guess if you're looking like just on Great Lakes on their million two from just from from theirs and the other 400,000, yeah, from there, um, you know, I guess, you know, looking at other development, you'd probably be having tax increments by then of maybe, you know, $2 million. Uh, so, if, you know, for additional four years, $8 million probably additional. But uh, that, that right now we have not put in the projections because it's very, because it is preliminary. You know, we have some hope of that. But we know the last time we went through this, it, there were some bumps in the road. So we, you know, we're hopeful that it'll, it'll proceed. But anything else, Alderman Berg? Any other questions from any, any of the aldermen? Any other questions from any of the aldermen? Okay, I'll open it up to the. Uh, thank you, Rich. Yeah, I, you might as well stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm sure somebody from the audience may have a question or comment. Um, before we open it to the general audience, I guess, um, Mike Leipam, if anybody from the Redevelopment Authority has any questions or comments? Okay, thank you. All right, general public, anybody have any questions or comments on the project or anything that we saw this evening? Can you step up to the mic and state your name for the record. My name is Bob Ginther. Speak right into the mic though, Bob. Okay, I'm gonna have to adjust. Okay, thank you. Alderman, Honorable Mayor, guest. After listening to much discussion, expressing the concerns and the benefits of building the proposed Harbor Center Hotel, Convention Center, and Restaurant, I wish to express my opinion and additionally, I speak for the carpenters present here tonight. We've got a small group of our carpenters here. This project has been dreamed of for almost 20 years. There has been a lot of commitment, both financial and of time and energy, given by numerous individuals. Negotiations began to select the best developer. Great Lakes Companies Incorporated was chosen, and negotiations continued so that the best agreement for the city of Sheboygan and its citizens could be obtained. This was done by representatives of city government, the Sheboygan Development Corporation, Friends of Sheboygan, and higher legal advisors, all of whom negotiated with the city of Sheboygan's best interest in mind. We must place our trust in those individuals and the decisions they made. We are now poised to move forward with a great project for the great city of Sheboygan. This will create jobs during construction, will hire approximately 300 hotel workers, will bring in tourist dollars to our city, and will spur future development. I've spoken with Tom Kramer, the general contractor for the hotel, 
water park and condo, and project manager of the convention center and restaurant several times. I now feel confident that every effort will be made to hire local contractors and local employees. We commend the Alder persons for their efforts to thoroughly understand every detail of the development agreement. You have asked questions, you've had your questions answered. We have been in all the public discussion meetings and have been reading and watching the televised meetings with great interest. We also have questioned if this project would indeed be a benefit to the city of Sheboygan. After much thought, with consideration to the fact that Carpenters believe so strongly in community development, we have decided the South Pier project would greatly benefit the city of Sheboygan. The opportunity offered and carefully thought out cannot be allowed to pass by. We must continue to move forward and progress. The benefits to everyone in the city of Sheboygan are apparent. Sheboygan has developed much in the past years and now can complete the one missing element needed by cities <coughs> of our size, a hotel and convention center. We urge all older persons here to share the vision, move forward, and help Sheboygan to remain one of the best cities in the nation to live in. We thank you for your time and the privilege to speak here tonight. Thank you, Bob. Anyone else from the public that would like to hear, be heard? Anyone else? Our Alderman-elect Marilyn Montemeyer is here this evening. Anything you'd like to add or any questions you have? Thank you, Marilyn. Marilyn and I spoke earlier this week. Marilyn will be taking my spot on the council, and I spoke to her earlier this week about this project uh, to make sure that um, she was kept abreast of what was going on because she'll inherit when, when I leave what my decision is today. So I did talk to her about that, and I appreciate that. Anybody else from the gallery? Back to the alderman, anybody question? Alderman Manning. Thank you. Um, simply a question to our carpenters and others who'd be involved locally. Uh, is there any desire and any advisability in any sort of legal requirement for percentage of labor uh, that would be locally employed? The only requirement would be on the convention center and hotel. The, Thanks, the stipulations on the convention center and hotel, which would be governed by the Wisconsin prevailing wage laws, would dictate let the lowest bidder be um, awarded the contract. Again, talking to the chosen general contractor on the hotel, on the water slide, and the condominiums, we feel confident that every effort is going to be made. It, it was an agreement that was reached after lengthy discussions. Uh, Tom Kramer, who was the Vice President of Kramer Brothers has agreed to sit down with myself and local building trades representatives shortly after this project is approved. Uh, we're poised uh, to, to meet with him. We look confident with working with him, and we all want to help make this city greater and, and turn out a great project. Any other questions, Alderman Man? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple of questions for Rich. I, I think these are rich questions, but uh, some citizens asked me to ask these two questions. One of them is, on what uh, occupancy rate are we basing uh, the uh, cash flow, uh, the room tax revenue? Mm -hmm. I know that there's two occupancy rates, one's for the resort and one's for the condominiums. The resort is higher than the condominiums. I think the average is 67%. Is that? Yeah, 67% for the resort, and I think it was 60. Is that the average? Okay. So, yeah, so I think it's about 70 for the resort and around 60 or 50 something for the condos. Yeah, in the 50s for the, okay, for okay, the condos. Okay, so that brings up the second question. Have, uh, has anyone, and I'm assuming that they have, but uh, I'm obligated to ask this question nonetheless. 
Has, has anybody done a, a, a survey or a comparable uh, with, within the area, Manitowoc, Sturgeon Bay, Kohler? Are, are these pretty pretty uh, realistic numbers or I believe assumptions that we're making? I believe the SDCA commissioned U.S. Realty to do that feasibility study, and within that there were comparables uh, listed uh, within that study and comparisons to, to this facility. But were those comparables made in the local area or were they done with similar development say for I, example in wisconsin dales or, or yes i believe so in I, the area in the region so speak, yeah. right i believe that they, they okay. were included okay. in there okay anything else alderman press no, thank, thank you. you any other questions from the alderman any other questions from the alderman any other questions from anybody in the audience anybody here tonight Mayor Schramm. Alderman Van Akron, before we dismiss, I'd just like to make one statement. Thank you for the, thank well, you for giving me the time. One second, before we dismiss, we have a couple documents right. that we need to okay, vote on and move on if you want to do that after. Or? Sure. Okay, Bye. thanks. Um, first of all, the document, we have a document in front of us tonight, resolution 322-203, approving this development agreement for the City of Sheboygan Redevelopment Authority, City of Sheboygan and Great Lakes. Company Inc. for the development of the portion of the South Pier District. Um, I would favor a motion to. It's been it's been moved and seconded. Alderman Wong, Warner and Berg to approve this resolution. What this means then tonight that this would then be forwarded to the Common Council next week Monday for final approval. Discussion under the document just uh, just one comment that that uh, what you have before you is a revised draft that was handed out last week uh, it's there's still some blanks in there that need to be filled in and there may be some minor modifications of that yet but uh, hopefully we'll be able to present the final version to you next Monday and we'll go over any changes that there have been from uh, from the current draft but the dollar changes from tonight you know the things that were presented tonight those things aren't changing I hope not <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope that's a no <laughs> that's a no <laughs> yeah. if you want it to pass that's a no <laughs> Okay, uh, Alderman Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hang on. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The pedestrian bridge is still shown there in the drawing. Would you, just for the benefit of the public, um, say what you did in Finance Committee as to the, the future of that? I've had some questions on the bridge, if it's going to happen or not, and uh, where it is in the whole scheme of things. I think we'll let Tom comment on the bridge. You don't want me to comment on the bridge. <laughs> well, the, the, the bridge we're looking at, uh, now the estimates are four to five million, and we show a one million in capital improvements for next year, uh, only because that right now the expenditure period at TIF expires at the end of next year, but that would be for a match. We'll be applying for federal grants to try to get an 80-20 or 75-25 uh, grant in order to construct that bridge. Okay, does that answer your question, Alderman Schultz? Okay. Alderman Werner. Mr. Chairman, I just really have a statement to read. Uh, it's short, much shorter than the last time. Uh, as all of you, I have thought long and hard about this project. The people in my district are very much in favor of proceeding. We have had ample time to review the majority of the issues involved thus far, and I believe that is a good thing. The opportunity presented for the future of the city of Sheboygan by this project is tremendous. Millions of dollars in new tax base, hundreds of new jobs, a clear diversification of our local economy. I do not believe it is a stretch at all to say that a good portion of Sheboygan's future is tied to her, to her lakeshore. Tourism, quality tourism, will become one of our city's most important industries, and it will balance our industrial base. We must think of the future, and I believe this is part of it. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Warner. 
Any other discussions on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying, do you want to call a roll or do you? Yeah. Roll, roll call. Roll call. Yeah, use your own. <laughs> Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Ports. Aye. Schultz. Devon Akron. Tevin Akron. Vanderwiel. Wangaman. Warner. Aye. Winninger. Aye. 14 eyes. Motion, came. Motion carried. Now this will go to the Common Council um, next Monday, I believe, uh, for final approval. If anybody has any questions, please make sure you contact uh, Steve, Tom, Rich. Uh, we'll do it from from there. Um, but we will talk about this again at the Common Common Council on Monday. Also, we on as a committee of the whole, a couple other documents that we have on our agenda from uh, that was referred here. Um, when you see these documents, you'll enjoy it. Uh, there's a document that was referred here back in 19, uh, 2000, the year April 17th, 2000. And every year it just gets referred to the next committee. So I would ask that we file this. It's on the construction of a new police station, remodeling city hall, and referral of document. This doesn't mean you're killing the uh, Police Department. It just means that you're filing a communication that we received in December of 1999. Um, this will not go away. That that will still go there. So I would ask for a motion. We'll take all four of them. We'll take all four of them at once. Um, there's also a from the Strategic Planning Committee um, some documents on um, the fire department and the ambulance issue documents that we never filed when we left that goal. That could be filed. Um, a strategic study that was done regarding the North 6th Street site with the county. That study was done by, I believe, the uh, chamber, and that came in so we could file that document. And then another document. Um, regarding snow emergency rules for the year 2000. Since we don't have any snow this year, we haven't had a snow emergency, we don't need this document anymore, except tonight. <laughs> um, but this was referred to when we changed the snow and parking rules back in the year 2000 and 2001, so this probably could be filed at this time also. So I would entertain a motion to file all four uh, of the committee reports and resolutions. It's been moved by Alderman Wangaman, seconded by Aldem Alderman Moody to file all four documents. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mayor Schramm. Thank you. Prior to tonight's meeting, I asked Alderman Van Akron for the opportunity to address you briefly. As we have all seen, the Great Lakes Project offers our city a wealth of opportunity but yes, there are some risks. There are a lot of concerns remaining in the community, but I would like to dispel one of these concerns. Many people have asked how the city can be considering such a large project in light of the anticipated reduction in shared revenue, which will impact our city services. A simple answer is that a cut in shared revenue does not affect your bonding needs. To ensure Sheboygan's viability, the city must continue to bond for these projects, which in the long run will enhance city growth, expand the tax base, and thereby reduce the dependence on our shared revenue. I would even go as far as saying it's precisely in these times of decreasing state revenues that we as a city must actively seek economic development. And I would hope this would respond and will answer the question, some of these concerns out there. Thank you to the response for some of the concerns. Thank you, Mayor Schramm. Okay, uh, that concludes all of our business. I would like to thank all of you. It was uh, This will be the last of the Committee of the Whole and me serving as chairman. Um, I appreciate your patience. We had some tough issues with the ambulance issues and the fire department. Um, this issue is huge, and I appreciate all your patience with me as your chairman and all the work that you've done uh, this year. I appreciate very much. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Oh. Hey, come on. <laughs> Excuse me.
Excuse me. The final vote Monday. Okay. There will be, a, as I said earlier, on Monday. The, at the, this is a committee of the whole meeting, so this will be referred to the Common Council. The Common Council, who is made up of 16 aldermen that are sitting here, will have the final say on next Monday. Um, so this will be will redone next Monday in a more formal way and probably a lot less discussion. But don't be afraid to ask questions in between here. We need a motion to adjourn. We we'll sign a die because we're closing. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Chair votes aye opposed. We're adjourned.